everyone, and welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be talking about the eternal struggle of staying motivated and consistent with our writing projects. It's like trying to herd cats or juggle flaming torches while riding a unicycle. Yeah. So, but fear not. I have a few tricks up my sleeve to help keep those creative juices flowing and those fingers tapping away at the keyboard. And so I just want you to know all authors at all stages struggle with staying motivated and committed to their writing projects. We have tons of works of progress that we want to hop to. We want to hyper focus on different things and sometimes we get burnout. out. So there's lots of reasons why we might not stay motivated and committed to our writing projects. But I promise once you stay motivated to those, it pays off. So let us get into this and start talking about staying motivated. So really quickly, I am Catherine Fogelman White. I am the author of the fantasy series Tales of the Woven and the co-author of the Heroes of Ravenford series. Um, I'm called the Keeper of Dragons because I collect dragons, but my siblings call me Hobbit because I'm short. Yeah, so I live in Oklahoma. I am a writing coach, a wife, a mom, a dog trainer, and a gamer. So that's a little bit about me, and now let's dive into this. All right, so finding your muse is kind of the first step in staying motivated and committed to your writing projects. Every writer has a muse, like a trusty magical companion, all right? So I'm a fantasy author. I'm going to bring in magical elements into this. So whether it's a mysterious black cat or an enchanted quill, find what inspires you. Inspiration might, realistically in the real world, come from music or a book cover or a laptop background or a game. I know for a lot of my author friends, like they they will go buy a book cover for the book that they are working on and looking at that beautiful book cover will just inspire them every time to keep working on this book. Um, so uh, for me, uh, a lot of times it's music that will set that mood and get me into the heart of my characters. So find what it is. Uh, seek out sources of inspiration that resonate with your passions and interests, whether it's a walk in nature, visit to a museum, or losing yourself in the pages of a favorite book. Um, don't set yourself in a dark corner with no water and sunshine and expect yourself to bloom. So get out of the house, get some sunshine, get some exercise, get out into places that are going to help feed your muse. You never know what treasure trove of ideas you'll uncover when you make an effort to get out and give your body that exercise, sun, water, and experiences. So pay attention to the whispers of your imagination, uh, those fleeting moments of insight and creativity that flutter, flutter, whoa, flutter by like elusive butterflies. So keep your muse, muse close and let it ignite your creativity and don't starve it. All right. So next, set achievable goals. All authors that I have met seriously struggle with this, me included. So imagine your writing journey as a heroic quest. So if you play games, online games like I do, um, you have the, your quest board and everything, and you might have one big quest, but then it's full of little quests in it. Or if you play D&D, &D, very similar thing. You have one big goal that you're shooting for, but it's broken up by you have to go get different artifacts. You have to fulfill different... Um, uh, you have to go do certain things to achieve the bigger thing, basically. So break down your grand epic writing journey quest into manageable chapters that guide you towards success without leaving you stranded in the wilderness of writer's block okay writing a novel is like slaying a dragon you don't do it all at once 
you know, just, just like we said earlier. So start small, like aiming to write a page a day or finish that pesky chapter you've been putting off or hitting a word count milestone. That works for a lot of people too. So be specific and realistic about what you want to accomplish, um, considering factors like your available time, energy, and resources. Um, then set deadlines to create a sense of urgency and accountability, but be flexible enough to adapt to unexpected detours along the way. So for me, setting a deadline I will always be over flexible and I'll be like, yeah, I've got this deadline, but you know, the world's not going to end if I don't meet my deadline. You know, I'm not going to lose my job as a writer if I don't meet my deadline. You know, I work for myself. So, but if you create a deadline that you can't get past, that does create that sense of urgency and accountability, that's, that works better for me. But then, you know, making sure that you stay flexible enough for any detours that might come along. So ultimately, remember that Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is a best-selling author, uh, author or novel. So adjust your goals as needed to stay on course. All right. Create a routine. Okay. Authors struggle so hard with this. A lot of people do in today's day and age. So routine is so important. There is only one way to slay the procrastination dragon. And that is with routine. Routine is the backbone of productivity and the arch nemesis of procrastination. So find a time and a place that works for you, whether it's first thing in the morning with a cup of coffee, like I do, uh, or burning the midnight oil by the glow of your laptop screen like I used to do whenever I was young and single and didn't have a child. Um, set the mood with rituals that signal to your brain that it's time to shift into writing mode. So like lighting a candle, brewing a cup of tea, or listening to a specific playlist. Um, establish that pre-writing routine to ease into the creative flow, whether it's a few minutes of meditation, a uh, brisk brisk walk to clear your mind or jotting down thoughts in a journal uh it may even be flipping through your vision board on um pinterest you know uh your inspiration board so um don't forget to honor your writing time like a sacred commitment guarding it fiercely against the distract distractions of everyday life okay so set a time and a place Make sure you have your little ritual, I don't know what else to call it really, to get your brain into writing mode and then protect that every day and stay consistent. Consistency is key to this, to all writing. Stay consistent. All right, join a guild. We like joining guilds, but basically like writers groups. So writing can be a solitary pursuit, but it doesn't have to be lonely, okay? Don't lone wolf it. Surround yourself with fellow wordsmiths who understand the struggle and can offer support um, and encouragement and the occasional virtual high five when you hit a word count milestone, okay? Join a writing group on Facebook or a Discord chat of like-minded authors um, well, let's face it, sometimes we all need a gentle kick in the pants to get us moving, so finding a group is a great way to find that accountability and have partners who can remind you of your goals, your progress, and maybe even point out a few embarrassing typos for good measure. I write so much better when I am bouncing ideas off of my fellow authors and showing them what I've written recently and we can kind of go over it. So, um, you know, there's nothing like a little public humiliation to keep you on track, right? So sharing your progress, your ideas and your struggles is like forming a party of heroes on a quest to save the realm. You'll find strength in numbers. Don't try to lone wolf it. It helps so much if you're in a writing group and you're making friends there that you can bounce things off of. 
Um, rewards, the reward system. I struggle with this, but it can really work once you learn how to reward yourself. So imagine each milestone that you would reach as a dragon sword. And with each victory, you get to claim that treasure. So give yourself a pat on the back for every word written, every plot twist conquered, and every character brought to life. Writing is a journey, not a destination. So celebrate the small victories along the way. Set up a reward system for reaching milestones or hitting your daily word count targets or getting a particular scene out of the way. You know, for me, I really struggle with romance. I hate writing romance. So anytime I come into a romantic scene, I am struggling. I don't want to do it. It's so hard. And so I will set up a reward for myself. I will go get a new pair of earrings for each romance scene that I successfully complete writing, complete it. So, um, you know, make sure you set that up for yourself, whether that's indulging in a fancy coffee, binge watching your favorite Netflix show, splurging on that new book you've been eyeing. I will do that for myself a lot of times after I've finished a big word count or a couple of chapters, I'll go buy a new book. I have a giant pile of books that I've not finished reading. So a little incentive goes a long way. You know, writing is hard work. And every brave knight deserves some loot. So after all, it's the journey that makes the destination worth it, right? So reward yourself. All right. Tame the inner editor. All right. I have to remind... I'm preaching to the choir on this one. I have to remind myself of this one all the time. So don't let your inner editor turn into a fire-breathing dragon that constantly criticizes your work. First drafts are like dragon hatchlings. They're a bit unruly. Let them be. Keep moving forward and save the editing for later. Your inner editor can be a helpful ally when it's actually time to polish your work. But when you are first writing that first draft, just write. Just get it written. Don't don't stop. Sometimes you'll have to go back and kind of fix some things as you're writing. You'll go, oh, so this is how the puzzle pieces fit in. And you'll have to go back and kind of fix some of the puzzle pieces. But overall, leave the editing alone. Don't touch the editing until it's time to edit. All right, the writer's block monster. So once you understand what writer's block is, it can be overcome. So writer's block is the dragon every writer faces. Fairly regularly, I'd say. It's a monster that guards the bridge to creativity. So, you know, it, it it's doubt. That's all it is. It's just doubt so a lot of times so first embrace the power of free writing to banish the blank page blues all right set a timer and write without stopping letting your thoughts flow freely without judgment or expectation that that blank page tends to trip up a lot of people so set a timer i don't care what you write if the red fox jumped over the brown dog sleeping on the white cat i don't care just write to start writing. If it is a specific scene you see in your head, even if it's not at the beginning of the book or this chapter, just start writing. Just write. Get that blank page. Get the blank page blues gone. Banish them. So if that doesn't slay it, um, try changing your environment to shake things up. Swapping your writing nook for a bustling coffee shop, taking a stroll in nature or try writing in a different format like pen and paper. Sometimes a change of scenery is all it takes for your brain to breathe new life into your creativity. Another tactic is to seek inspiration from other sources. So dive into a book, watch a movie, listen to music that sparks your imagination. Again, kind of going back to that muse, you know, let the stories of others ignite the flame of your own creativity. And then sometimes when writer's block strikes, it's because your brain recognizes that there's a problem with the story. 
Is there a deeper issue in your plot or in your character or in your setting? Is your character being true to themselves? A lot of times if I'm trying to force my character to act a certain way to in what I think will advance the plot, but they're not being true to themselves, I will get writer's block because my brain recognizes that that's not all right. And I have to go back and figure out what that is. Sometimes I need to work the plot around differently than I thought I was going to. So, you know, are you trying to force something? And remember, sometimes the best way to conquer writer's block, conquer writer's block, is to simply give your permission, yourself permission to take a break. Step away from the keyboard, recharge your batteries, and trust that inspiration will return to you when you least expect it, always when you least expect it, and when it's least convenient, every time, in the shower, at the doctor's office, any place but at the keyboard. So, but, you know, facing your fears can be your way of vanquishing this beast. That, that's how you beat writer's block. Just face it. All right, stay flexible. You know, let's be real. Life has a funny way of throwing curveballs when you least expect it. Maybe your cat decides to take a nap on your keyboard or your internet goes on strike right in the middle of a writing sprint. Sometimes your story will even take a turn you didn't plan, like a quest to rescue a princess turning into a dragon's quest for a better cup of tea. Roll with the punches, my friends, and remember that even the best laid plans can go awry and will. So embrace the unexpected. Writing is a journey, not a destination, and sometimes the path is more intriguing when it's meandering. All right? So don't stress out about it. Stay flexible. Keep, it, it's, a, it's a delicate balance between keeping a routine, staying consistent, but then staying flexible as well. And it's a journey to get to know yourself and finding out what that looks like. All right, your why. Remember your why, your true quest. As your adventures in writing continue. Remember your true reason for writing, the reason you started this journey. Remembering your why while writing is like spotting a lighthouse in a story me see. It provides clarity and direction when the waves of doubt and distraction threaten to overwhelm you. Start by reconnecting with your underlying purpose for writing, whether that was to share a story that's been burning inside you or to inspire others with your words or simply to fulfill a deep-seated passion. My reason for writing is just because I wanted to see my name on the book on a book cover. I still want to see my name on more book covers. I just I it's so cool to me to see that. So that's you know, and, and sharing awesome plot twists, too. That would be another one. I am constantly on the hunt for the next plot twist that will have my readers gasping. So that that's my why. Write down your why and keep it close at hand to ward off self-doubt and procrastination. I keep my books handy where I can see the cover and see my name on it and go, wow, that's so cool, you know? Uh, whenever you feel adrift or unsure of your path, revisit your why to realign your focus and reignite your passion. Surround yourself with reminders of your purpose, whether it's inspirational quotes, photos of loved ones, or tokens of past successes like my books. Keeping your why in mind is like, gar uh, is like the guiding star that leads you to your ultimate goal. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. That is it. In the realm of writing, staying motivated and committed is akin to embarking on a never-ending quest. It just doesn't end. But it's a lot of fun. Every writer faces their own mythical creatures, be it procrastination or self-doubt. But with the right tools and a sprinkle of magic or strong coffee, you can conquer them all. You can, you can conquer them all. So... You know, don your armor, sharpen your quill, follow these tips, write down your why, find your time and your place, and stay consistent. And remember that your next literary adventure is just a sentence away. <laughs>